61% uh, of folks uh, surveyed in Korea had experienced a cybersecurity breach of some kind within the last 12 months. 36% had experienced 10 or more which is a crazy number when you think about it. Now of those, 72% said the cost was uh, US $1 million over the last 12 months. And of the large organizations, 46% said it was US $2 million or more. So that is, that is a pretty big cost. And it really, my thinking breaks it down into uh, two vectors. The first is, are you attacking humans or are you attacking computers? And the second is, is this a, a broad brush attack? Is this more of a brute force or is this very specific and very targeted? And I think in terms of AI and cybersecurity, um, you're seeing impacts in each of these four areas. So let, let's take humans and kind of the broad brush attack. And I think for most of the people in the room, this is gonna be 90% of the types of attacks that you're gonna see. This is the traditional phishing, uh, so on. Basically trying to man manipulate humans, social engineering. If you think about this game, and this is a game that a lot of cyber criminals play, fundamentally there are, there are two aspects to this. There's authenticity. So can I appear to be someone else and trick you into believing. Now, historically, you think about a, a phishing campaign 10 years ago, we'd all received those emails. They were pretty easy to just, you could, you could pick them a long way away. They were oftentimes in, in a broken language, coming from overseas, didn't really make much sense. You think about the introduction of things like chat GPT and the wide availability of this, it now makes it much easier for bad guys to appear uh, like someone who is authentic. It's easier to create language and uh, uh, materials that, that, uh, that just appear authentic. So you use these tools, they can help create code and scripts to make this an automated and easier process. So in terms of thinking about these broad brush phishing attacks against humans, I think this is like uh, AI definitely makes this more prevalent and it makes it more effective. In terms of specific attacks on humans, now this is, this is a much rarer case. Um, I was in Australia recently and was speaking with a CTO of a big retail bank in Australia. And he told me a story about how one of their customers, and the first time this has happened, had actually been convinced into sending money by someone who, when they picked up the phone, it sounded like a relative. This is really scary. Um, I don't know if you've, like, on the less scary side, if you've heard of the, the cover, the, the Frank Sinatra cover of uh, Coolio's song, Gangster's Paradise, that sounds perfectly authentic. It's kind of crazy what some of these technologies are now able to do. I myself are a little bit worried about this. I have 190 episodes of a podcast out on there. That is more than enough material for someone to be able to create an AI uh, use AI to recreate my voice in a compelling way and convince somebody I know uh, that it's actually me they're speaking to. Then I think about the attacking computers and the broad brush attacking computer side of things. We protect against a lot of DDoS attacks. And uh, in our latest DDoS report, we've noticed that over the, the course of the last six months, the sophistication of some of the DDoS attacks has absolutely picked up. And I've spoken to a couple of the engineers on our team, and one of them talked about actually using ChatGPT to create a script to, uh, as, as he told the, 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 the AI, he, he wanted to create a script to load balance or load test his website. And he got the, the ChatGPT to uh, make it seem like it was a Chrome agent, but to uh, uh, drop in variables that made the traffic seem very authentic. Now, we don't have proof that this increase in sophistication in these attacks is coming from that, but it sure seems like if he can go in and create a script that is very sophisticated, he's using it to create his own, that bad actors also have access to these tools. Well, if you've got the best engineers in the world using things like co-pilots to help create code, it doesn't seem to be too much of a leap to think that we actually might start seeing bad actors using AI to create very specific targeted attacks. If they wanna get in, they will use, start to use AI to get in. It's always a constant battle between the spear and the shield. And these same tools that are being used for offense can be used for defense, which is part of the good news. There's a, a resource on the internet that can help 
help you figure out whether something was written by OpenAI, but basically it's like an op it's an AI detector for a human to be able to tell whether something is created by code. Uh, actually, for machines, uh, in the same way they're improving at doing all these things, they're also improving in detecting whether something has been created by AI. Uh, and so it's not, it's not all doom and gloom. Like these, these things that are being used to attack us can also be used to defend us. It's AI and cloud hacking. Well, part of, part of the problem here is we're, we're making this generation shift from on-prem into cloud. As we move up into the cloud, uh, to think about relying on cloud vendors, the big hyperscalers, to provide security, I would caution everyone listening uh, to this panel against doing that. Um, there is a reason why there is a separation, for example, between accountants and auditors. You don't want people that are providing you the services for the cloud, guaranteeing you that their services are secure.